Okay, um, time to do some power output tests on this beast. This, uh, no, I'm sorry, lovely gal. Yeah, I don't, don't want to make her mad. Um, and to do that, of course, you need a, a load you know, of some sort. Uh, normally you would choose a non-reactive load, not speakers, not coils, but uh, uh, resistors. Um, I don't happen to have a 40 watt 2 ohm resistor, precision resistor handy. Uh, but what I do have is a, a crap load of uh, nichrome wire or some alloy similar. Um, let me walk around here. This this stuff right here. Um, I get the yards and yards out of it. These, this came out. Of, I did a repair job uh, for someone dear friend of mine um, who, who does uh, pottery firing, and so has a kiln. And these elements, they they do wear and uh, need to be replaced. Uh, sometimes they go completely open. And uh, that, in her case, that, that was what happened uh, with a couple of the elements. And you, you replace one, you replace them all. Uh, they just wear out. Cry out loud these things. Get up uh, uh, approaching 3,000 degrees, somewhere between two and 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you try surviving in that with oxygen in the environment. So anyway, uh, I've picked off a section of this uh, that's two ohms. Uh, uh, it's shown on my meter 2.3, maybe 2.2 .2 if I wiggle the connectors, the uh, connections to it. The, uh, the probes to this meter uh, generally go about 0.2 ohms, 200 milliohms. So right now it's reading 2.2 ohms. Uh, perfect! Uh, that's what we're going to be using as a uh, load uh, for this amp during this test. Uh, this being as, as much mass as it is and open to the air, it's not going to heat very much. It will get warm, um, but it's not going to get hot, and so it's not going to change resistance very much. Uh, insignificant to our test here. Uh, what I want to know is um, where this amplifier begins to clip um, as as from factory um, you know how many watts is it putting out uh, and at what frequency will it do it uh, I already have a pretty good idea it's not the first one of these I've looked at um, I've, I'm not using the solid state rectifier I'm using the 5U4 GB uh, this is one I know. It's it's a used one, but it's a, it's a strong one. Uh, my workhorse, uh, 5881s, uh, 6L6GC. If you like Coinbase, these are the Rus Russian-made ones. This has been on for uh, about two hours now, uh, just looking out for any troubles uh, and, and I'm not getting any. There's no overheating. I, I've adjusted the bias for the apple tubes uh, appropriately, uh, but I have yet to do a power test. Uh, what's the thing in out? What's the thing outputting? Um, so let's see. That signal generator here, function generator, just putting out a sine wave right now. Set to the counter here. It's set to about three kilohertz. Um, Everything's warmed up. I'm going to switch the meter from reading ohms to reading AC volts. And so we're going to measure that across this 2 ohm load resistor. Um, also, I'm going to, I've got the scope right now on 5 volts per division. I'm going to set that all the way down to the most sensitive 50 millivolts per division. The very first uh, test is. Uh, what noise is there? And I'm going to 
I had disconnected the amplifier from the load resistor to actually just measure the load resistor and not the secondary winding of the output transformer. I am sorry for the noise and the traffic. Uh, nice firm connections here. Okay. So we got the scope across the resistor, the meter here across the resistor, and the amplifier feeding out to the resistor. And uh, the scope is set to its most sensitive position. Right now, the amplifier is powered, um, and it's a flat line, which is good. I don't see any 60 hertz stuff in there. Um, I'm cranking up on the input volume a little bit. There's nothing plugged into it. Actually, there is. I'm sorry. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? Oh, jeez, whiz. Okay. I'm sorry. Backwards I crawl. Uh, slow this down a little. Something that looks reasonable. Oh, that's probably strobing on the camera. Uh, okay, so now we are actually uh, looking at uh, 50 millivolts per division. Uh, nothing plugged into the in any inputs. All of the controls are set to minimum. Um, I would not complain about 3 millivolts into 2 ohms. You're not going to hear that through the speakers. And I'm almost sure that what we're looking at there is 60 hertz stuff. Very, very, very small. And I have to volume up some. Uh, this is channel 1. All the way up. Tone controls all the way up. Okay, you can see a little bit of stuff there. And, uh, 21 millivolts. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to complain about that. The tube noise and, you know, a little bit of microphonics. But that's, that's good. No complaints. You might just barely be able to detect that. I have a speaker. This you certainly would. Uh, so back off on the volume on that channel. That was nothing plugged in and when there's nothing plugged in it, that it, the uh, input to that channel is shorted it, as, as it should be with, with both of them. So I'll plug in my generator in. It's set right now to about 3 kilohertz. Um, uh, continue on with this. I, I just want to show the setup uh, right now. Uh, to actually do the uh, output test I'm going to uh, take the camera away from the app and put it on the tools here and, uh, and make things a little, maybe, hopefully, make things a little more, more clear. Back in a flash. Okay, and well, with any luck, oh, this will show up well and uh, I won't bump into your legs because it's right there in front. Um, so, uh, you know, the counter here, just a display frequency, uh, the funky generator creates it, and the scope. I'm going to set this back up to about, uh, 5 volts per division, that should be about right. And, uh, increase the sweep rate a little bit. This is set to read um, AC volts, RMS, and that is truly RMS. Uh, good up to a few 10 kilohertz, um, most especially if it's a pretty good approximation of a sine wave. Um, anyway, um, that's what we got, and that's what we're going to use. So, at 3 kilohertz, I've got that connected into input 1, the uh, no effects channel. Uh, none of that really matters, really, right now. All I'm interested in is what. What's this thing uh, 
capable of not putting into two ohms. How many watts? The, the thing they rate it for 40. Um, and that seems about right for the tube complement in the thing. Uh, so, uh, up the volume some, here we go. Got some, got some signal there. Yeah, and the traffic noise. Oh, let's, wait, let's break this out. See, up into your leg again. There, you're fine. You live. I hope. All right. Uh, crank this up. Well, I'm gonna go all the way up so you can see what it looks like. The severe clipping and just distortion. Uh, yeah, that's that's way overmodulated, and that sounds sometimes lovely, uh, depending on what you're doing. Um, so where I'm looking at now is how. How well balanced is the clipping? It's clipping equally on the top and the bottom, right at, right at the same point. That's good indication that the, the, the tubes are at least somewhat matched. Again, this, this model does not have a balance control for the bias on the tubes. Um, it, it just has a, a, a gross bias control, and uh, both tubes uh, have to take that. Um, I might put a known weak tube, uh, output tube 6L6GC and a known good one in there uh, just to show what can happen. Uh, but I'm not going to add a balance control to this uh, necessarily unless instructed to do so but I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, uh, it's, it doesn't matter that much, uh, that balance. It, it's good to know that it does. Uh, that the tubes are, the output tubes are fairly well balanced. It, it, if one is really sick and weak, uh, it'll clip on one side or, or distort terribly. Um, I noticed just, just before clipping, there's a little tiny, you probably can't even see it, but a very tiny little bit of crossover hump right there. Uh, but by the time you get up to where it's clipping, you, you know, who cares? You can see those humps real clearly there, I hope. Uh, so, let's see. I'm gonna call that, let's make it easy on ourselves. Let's set it to 9 volts here. 9 volts AC RMS. I'm just fiddling with the volume control here. Probably be easier to diddle with the output of this uh, function generator, but you know, we'll do with this. Uh, oh, come on now. Boy, that is touchy. Alright, let's call that 9 volts. And I don't see any clipping. 9 volts squared, 81 divided by 2 ohms. Well, that's 40 and a half watts. Just as they said. That's what it's rated for. That's at 3 kilohertz. Now, um, and the tone controls notwithstanding, you know, I can, I'm messing with the volume right now. Get back up to, I turn the wrong knob. Um, there's the treble control. There's the Base control having no effect on 3 kilohertz. Treble control does. So that tone stack, at least at uh, 3 kilohertz, is working. Good to know. I know the tone stack. Nothing wrong with those. Um, so let's dial her back. Let's make this actually about a kilohertz. Ugh. A thousand hertz. And tighten this up a little bit. And where's it clip? So let's call that 8.5 squared. Well, let's say 8. Just to make it simple. 
8 squared 64 divided by 2. Well, it's, you know, 32 watts at a kilohertz. Okay. Don't complain about that. Let's go down, way down. Thirty hertz. Thirty cycles. And where does that go? And you can start to see modulation in there with this sixty hertz. Um, looks like it begins altering just about. Let's call it eight volts. 8 volts, square that, divide by 2, uh, 32 watts. Not shabby. Uh, and th these output tubes I'm using here have, have some age on them. They're not brand new. Uh, but they're, they're, I know they're in good shape and are clearly uh, fairly well matched. This is a clip evenly. Alright, so uh, I guess that pretty much says, answers the question, is this thing putting out what it's supposed to be? And the answer is yes. It is. Um, let's see, is there anything else I wanted to cover for this? Oh, yes, actually, there is. Ugh. I'm gonna, yeah, don't need the scope here. Turn these off. Uh, we'll need the meter. I want to look at uh, just to double check and we'll go to DC volts here's B plus main B plus right now 455 volts wasn't well, that interesting uh, this cap is rated for 450 volts eh, 452 is not going to trouble that at all but it still put a 500 in there uh, 440 on that one and uh, 397 on that one. Uh, these two keep mine are in series. Uh, more or less it's split uh, between the two. More or less, sometimes less. Um, 454 volts. Uh, this thing's running, uh, the input voltage by device today uh, about 125 volts. Uh, and you know, direct. I'm, going through, I'm sorry, I'm not going through any ballasts or very accurate. It's plugged right in to the uh, wall and working. It's not overheating. Uh, nothing is. Uh, nothing's above temperature to be expected. This is cool, which is cool. Um, all of these, these tubes, by the by, are, are new. Uh, ones I put in there, the, the ones that were in here, I tried to salvage, so I, they're just shot. Uh, so, to do this test, you know, I, I filled it up with, with no, no good ones. Uh, I'm not seeing any grief at all with that. Now, and the other thing, it's a it, B plus, the plate supply for the output tubes is uh, 454 volts. Now, I'm going to look at the grid bias supply for the output tubes. 52 volts, it's already exactly where it should be. And that's where it's going to stay. Yeah, I could get an eek out a few more watts out of this amp by cranking that voltage uh, up, meaning not minus 52, but maybe minus 48 or minus 40. And that'll make the output tubes, it'll increase your gain a little bit, uh, but it'll, it'll cook them. And you run the risk of cooking other things, so I'm not going to do that. What the good book says is uh, with 460 volt plate, and we're doggone close to that, it wants minus 52 volts or thereabouts on these uh, 6L6 GC control grids. And that, so that's what it's going to be. Uh, tubes love you a long time if you uh, don't abuse them. Um, so I think that's going to be it for this clip. Um, more to come. Um, not sure what exactly, but 
uh, boys and girls, this, this amp is, is working. Um, I have no complaints with it. I'm going to replace um, these 10 microfarad caps I dummied in with, with the proper 20 microfarad ones. I probably ought to be able to get 500 volt ones on the internet. In fact, I'll probably go to the same business that uh, sold, sold us the uh, driver transformer and uh, put those in and uh, I don't know, maybe clean up the box of the cabinet a little bit and uh, put it in there and actually make the thing look like a working guitar ramp again.